College basketball's Final Four was scheduled to be played today. Instead, because of the coronavirus, the NCAA tournament was canceled for the first time in its 81-year history. Seasons and dreams ended, like those of the Baylor Bears. The team set a school and conference record this season with a 23-game winning streak. One of the reasons for Baylor's success, the play of Freddie Gillespie, who, as we found out in early March, is a lesson in perseverance and faith. So this is the gym where you lived. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is where I spent the last three years of my life, is working tirelessly in here. Freddie Gillespie had no other choice. Arriving at Baylor, a perennial NCAA tournament team and pool for NBA talent, out of little-known Carleton College. Have you had a kid like Freddie before? Never, and I think uh, you just don't have players today starting out at a Division three school, playing a total of 16 minutes for a whole year, and then coming to the highest level. Scott Drews in his 17th season as the Bears head coach. When he came here, I joked, but he struggled to score by himself in the gym, and what I meant by that is he was just real raw. As a kid in Minnesota, Gillespie poured his athleticism into football, not basketball. His first organized attempt at hoops didn't come until the eighth grade. I didn't love it at first. I liked, I loved being with my friends, like, yeah, because uh, the, the teammates that I play football with, uh, almost all of them played basketball too. But the sport itself, I was like, all right. I mean, I, I, anytime I touched someone, it was a foul. I was like, this is, this is, I was like, this is lame. I don't, I don't want to do this. But after a year off and a growth spurt, which put him at six four, Gillespie gave basketball another shot and something changed. I was a bit more mature, a bit more athletic, a bit more coordinated by that time. So I, at that point, I started to really kind of fall in love with it. Um, junior year, I decided that I really kind of wanted to play at the next level, play in college. Um, but I didn't really see Division I as an opportunity. Division Three was, and Carleton College, the small liberal arts school close to Gillespie's Minneapolis area home, is where he landed. So, so I thought I can go there, still get a nice, solid degree play bass on the side and then kind of get out of my system and then go work my office job. I like that. Get it get it out of my yeah, system. Yeah. <laughs> you did not get it out of your system. I did not. No, it only it only I only grew to love the game more and more. Gillespie didn't play his freshman year but got time in the rotation in his sophomore season. Just like in high school, that's when something changed. I was getting better each game and I thought, you know, I really feel like there's more to this in me. Oh, what a pass. I could really kind of play at the, the next level, like at a higher level. And then one day I'm just watching a, a UNC game, but talking about the size and the length and the athleticism, saying, you know, that one guy's a 7 2 wingspan, I'm a 7 6. Um, talking about the verticals, and I thought, I have all that, so what's stopping me? And it just kind of clicked. I thought I should be in Division One. Gillespie shared his dream with his parents. Just really showed me how strong mother's love is because she didn't even bat nine. She's like, okay, for sure, this is what you want, this is what you feel. Uh, well, then we'll figure it out. People don't get. D3 to D1 does not happen. It doesn't. Jared Nunes, an assistant on the Baylor staff, got a tip about Gillespie from his dad, a high school coach and former college star in Minnesota, who's also a Gillespie family friend. My dad always said, you know, if he just came to Baylor and had an opportunity to get to have us work with him, that, you know, sky would be the limit for him. So. Gillespie's open. Most of our walk-ons are about six foot, six foot two. So you get a six nine guy with a seven six wingspan that wants to walk on. I mean, you are receptive. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, you don't necessarily know if they're going to uh, flourish and, and turn out like Freddie obviously has. Oh, beauty! What a great setup again. They didn't have a scholarship for you. They made it clear if you're going to come here, Freddie, this is going to be a walk on. Yeah. That had to be a big decision. It was. I talked to my mom about it, my dad about it. And um, basically, say, you know, it's just how much do you really, you know, believe in yourself? You know, we believe in you, but are you going to put the work in? You got to really take that big step and, and walk out on faith. So that's what I did. The left's always tough still. Which brought Gillespie to this gym at Baylor. He sat out that first walk on year, which might best be described as his workout year. He really benefited from uh, our strength coach, our nutrition program, and all the resources that you get at a Power 5 school like Baylor. At the same time, all the boring things that nobody really wants to spend time on, he embraced that. Working on right, left-hand layup, reverse right-hand, reverse left layup. It's like learning your ABCs. ABCs, the very basic, one, two, three, four. You learn a foreign language, you got to count to ten. You guys remember just having, just being raw to the point where it was almost unbearable. So how did you bear it? 
I, what I really told myself is, okay, everyone in this gym, no matter who they are, started out where I was at some point. Now, they may have been seven years old when they were at, at my level, or I may have been 11, and they got to this point, so if they can do it, then I can too. And when Gillespie began doubting himself, it was his mother who reminded him of a quote from a commercial featuring NBA star Blake Griffin. Something my college coach told me was you have to fall in love with the process of becoming great. When you're tired, exhausted, when you don't want to go to practice, you have to enjoy that and find enjoyment in that in order to continue. So that's kind of just what I did. I just learned to love, you know, the obstacles, the bad games, the ups and downs and all of it. The result? Gillespie was awarded a scholarship to play at Baylor starting last season. That was uh, one, definitely one of the highlights of my life, just because, um, you know, confirmed all the hard work and, you know, confirmed that the people that did believe in me, that they were right and, and um, that I was right. Second opportunity for Gillespie. This season, as a redshirt senior, Gillespie was named a full-time starter. Gillespie able to finish it off. He was an integral part of a historic run for the Bears, and when we visited Gillespie, Baylor was on track for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Ten for Gillespie. How much fun are you having now in a game that you learned to love in high school? I mean, it's even better than I imagined. Um, every game is amazing, and also the guys that I'm sharing it with, too, are just phenomenal. I mean, having a great season, you know, also helps. Breaking some, uh, some records, that always makes it a bit more fun. The coronavirus would strike next. The NCAA making it official. There will not be a tournament this season. The NCAA tournament canceled and the Bears run over. But Freddie Gillespie's time in the game may not be. Is the NBA a dream of yours to play in the NBA? Yeah, actually it is. I mean, I love the game and that's the high, and I want to play at the highest level. So I would not want to play against the very best of the best. I said, to me, you have to at least try. I mean, uh, so at least, you know, I mean, if you don't try, then you just, you just told yourself no. I said, for me, someone's going to have to come and tell me, no, you weren't good enough. And even then, that might not be enough. A couple draft boards right now have him as a late second round pick. So keep watching.